How are we supposed to manifest when we are in constant survival mode? Hi everybody, I am Michelle. This is Angel Souls and if you are not familiar with my work, I am an angelic medium, which is to say this esoteric art is a little bit different than like psychic readings, other types of mediumship, tarot readings, a little bit of a different frequency. We all work together. We're all bringing in a beautiful part of the information for your consideration. So it's not downplaying anybody else's art, but I want to put that out there because I've been doing this a very long time and I've, I've noticed how people tend to get us all confused. <laughs> so if you have questions on what an angelic medium actually does, I can make a whole other video on that. Leave your comment down below. But for today, we are going to pose the question to the angels. How are we supposed to manifest and be in a high frequency, manifesting the good stuff when at every turn there might be money worries, health worries, you know, being controlled, you know, all of these things, housing costs, very real third dimensional ego consciousness issues in our faces. All right. So we're going to pose that question right here, right now. And it would be helpful whenever you're seeing this to breathe with me. Time is not linear. We will pick up on the energy. Cool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. The survival part of us, the ego part of us, is, they're showing me like this big expansive energy and it's a little tiny part of it, right? And so they're saying, you know, survival mode is fear mode. And we are here to be human. The whole idea is to come in and experience these types of things, to learn how to implement the tools that we have acquired, whether it's through various lifetimes or maybe just in this timeline where you know you have learned your lessons and you've learned to be strong you've learned to hang in there uh to to bring that to the surface but they're saying that there's um so much if we want to call it brainwashing there's so much of an energetic overlay and for some people it's been imprinted so an overlay is just like imagine mud being splashed on you and you're like now i'm dirty i gotta clean myself off right so it's sort of like seeing that energetically an imprint is where now you function from someone else's energetic space, right? They've imprinted their energy into you and now it's almost like you're malfunctioning. This is where people forget themselves. They forget their power. And that is what's happening when we are in survival mode. So again, some have just an energy overlay, others it has actually imprinted. Now, unfortunately, in the collective, there's been so much imprinted energy that now that's sort of the ruling force, if we want to see it that way, right? So they're explaining that you don't have to give in to the narratives. And so, like, let's take finances, for example. I'm in the United States, if you can't tell by the way I speak. I'm in the United States, and we have had a housing crisis. Our food is, uh, who knows what the heck is going on with our food. I know the whole world likes to really laugh that everybody here in the U.S. is, um, overfed um, and we're obese and all that. And I'm one of those people. I'm overweight as well. But I can tell you that's not what's going on. We have improper food, okay? And that's what we take in. And I think it's a lot of malnourishment. And so the body's constantly wanting to get more and more, just you know, grabbing for anything to try to give ourselves nourishment when there is no nourishment there. You see what I'm saying? And then on top of that, we have a banking system that's incredibly corrupt. All kinds of things, all the powers that be, right, that are working in, at least in this country, a lot of it is not for the people. A lot of it is a confused sort of scrambled energy around the energy of money. So what happens? Well, if there's talk of a recession, for example, interesting thing. I'm not a financial expert, but I uh, saw this one person on social media who took the actual depression and took the numbers from, maybe you know what I'm talking about, um, took the numbers from what people, what was like the average uh, yearly salary at that time, what was rent at that time, how much did food cost, and actually compared it to what we're going through these days. We're in a way worse position than they even were in the depression. Okay. So when we have that energetic overlay, right? Everybody be scared. Oh no, this, that, and the other. You may not be healthy. You're not going to be able to afford your house. Maybe you're not getting a hold of good food. 
the food that's put in front of you to sort of uh, cure any sort of food crisis is now not really food. You know, all of this stuff gets put in front of us. And part, especially if you're watching this video right now, part of what your soul contract is, a little piece of it, okay, <laughs> is to recognize what's going on. Now, they're saying that some humans, I don't know why I say it like that, humans, um, <laughs> so, whatever, I'm just a person over here. So, some of us humans go way too far with that and they start going into the sting because anger gives us energy if people don't realize that it does and that is why you are designed to get angry about certain things as a human we incarnate to experience the whole range of emotions the good and the bad and everything in between so as an aside if any practitioner comes forward and says you're not allowed to feel anything um walk away okay like that's not no that person now they have a whole other video on that I'll leave comments down below but <laughs> this is you know a time to really look at what the game is without necessarily having to shout it from the rooftops and without having to create drama around it okay so i'm not going after conspiracy theorists i'm i'm not going after anybody but i think the commentary here would be about people who get a charge out of like revealing a mystery go go read a mystery book don't be putting that energy out in the collective okay but again to be in this balanced place to see it and not panic if you don't know my story uh i moved to i've lived in los angeles originally from ohio moved to los angeles lived in new york city for most of my adult life then moved to colorado springs and um colorado's a little weird many reasons I can explain that in another video if you want but what ended up happening was I moved here I had a rent control apartment in New York City and didn't need a car it was so dumb <laughs> to like leave there but I ended up getting here there's no uh, no laws to protect renters from skyrocketing rents and that's what happened they ended up upping my rent so much that one person with a normal well, look whatever you would consider a normal salary but the area's average salary could not maintain that and there was also something there of just like, again, it's a whole other conversation, but it just felt like there was a lot of energy seeping out of me. It wasn't the peaceful place I thought it was going to be. So this is an example of I could go into panic and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that that wasn't stressful. Of course it was. And with the kind of work I do, I love this work. I think it's valuable. I hope you do as well. But it's been, you know... If we're looking at it as like a business, you know, it's been saturated by money grabbers. Hey, we see that this is now becoming trendy. Let me get on social media. I'll pick up a deck and just pretend like I know what I'm doing. And they don't. And that's very irresponsible. It's going to kick back on them. We don't need to worry about that. Okay. Not that I want anybody to get punished, but it's, it's messed things up a little bit. Any talk of a recession, people hang back. So it's been tough for a lot of people out there. Now, in this example that I'm giving to you, I'm giving it to you for good reason. I had stressful times, but if that had been me 15 years ago, I would have been a mess. And I would have, like, completely crumpled under the pressure. Uh, and I would have been, you know, asking the question, how am I going to do this? I would have been seeing myself as a failure. You know, how did I not take care of myself? Well, you really can't when you've got all these entities kind of squeezing and wrenching down on you. So one of the things that I learned, and I hope you can take this away with this, you know, topic of what do we do when we're in survival mode. I think part of what they're getting at here and having me share this is that see it for what it is and don't play into it. Now, am I saying don't pay your bills? Pay your bills. But if you're in a place where you're being squeezed on or you just lost your job because employers are doing all kinds of wacky things these days, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right because the whole reason why we get put into survival mode is to weaken us, to get us angry. Remember I said anger can, anger can kind of fuel you. Well, anger can be used in a constructive way. I just bumped my microphone. <laughs> anger can be used in a constructive way or a destructive way. This is where people start turning on one another. We start looking at differences in one another and 
and pointing that out because we've been trained to do that. Now, instead of feeling the exchange of love with our fellow humans, we're seeing them as competition. We're seeing them as the problem. We're seeing them as having more than what we get. And we'll find any story to put around that to justify our anger. So it's not just about, oh gosh, we're hitting on hard times. This is carefully designed. And so the angels and archangels are coming forward and saying, recognize it. Keep your heart out of it. Keep your heart out of it. Keep this sacred <laughs> right here because this is your power center. Your heart is your power center. Your love is your power center. Now, we all have soul contracts. We're all here at the same time. We're all trying to learn things. So we can't just go, you know what? I am tired with the finances uh, example. I'm tired of being in debt. I'm just going to manifest that I'm out of debt. Eh, you skipped over a few steps there. Okay. <laughs> Step one is realizing why am I in debt? Now, what I just said here is not to say you have no accountability. Maybe you overspent. Maybe you weren't responsible with your money. That could definitely be part of your soul contract lesson to learn how to deal with this very uh, 3D kind of third dimensional ego consciousness. That's what I mean by 3D. Uh, 3D energy. What do I do with that? It's, it's the same thing as what do I do with anger? What do I do with happiness? Well, how do I feel balanced and harmonious? How do I always come back to my equilibrium even though I'm in a duality consciousness having very polarized experiences, right? So that's all a part of this that they're sharing with us. So I wouldn't I wouldn't go so far. Don't, don't overcorrect and be like, I don't care about any of this. I don't care about my finances. I don't care about like, whatever. Think of the credit score. I've used that as an example several times. You can get squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. And then if you're late on a payment on something, like let's say it's your car payment, you're late on it, hit your credit score. And it's like, look at what a bad person you are. We're going to threaten whether or not you're going to have a roof over your head because of your credit score. It's messed up. And don't even get me started on taxes. How many times can they tax us? Give it some thought. Give it some thought. There are some financial experts out there who could explain a lot better than me about all the areas, at least in the United States, where we are taxed, right? So those are all those things where, like, you've been conditioned to blame yourself to say, gosh, I should have done better or I need to work harder. That's the other thing. I need to panic. I need to run out. And now what? You go running into the arms of some organization, let's say, that could certainly use your labor for a certain end goal. That's a part of this game here. That's part of this game. Now, you might be saying, Michelle, get to the point. How the heck do I get out of this? Well, <laughs> don't ignore this first part. And if you're getting impatient, that's your ego. Check your ego. Because if you're getting impatient with this whole video, then that's something to look at. And if you miss that first part, you're not going to be ready for the next part. Okay? You can't leap ahead. So what we need to do is start out every day getting back into our spiritual practice. Now, I know. I know what that sounds like. Well, you're a spiritual practitioner, so you're going <laughs> to do this whole thing. I am, I've never once hidden the fact that I am human. I do this work, sure. But have I gotten up and just been like, ugh, and gotten out of bed and like, you know, stumble to the kitchen get a cup of coffee and stand there confused trying to figure out how to make breakfast yeah that's how I start out my morning sometimes uh yeah I do that I do that but this morning I woke up and I was in that in-between state right the theta brainwave state when you're just going to sleep and when you're just waking up beautiful times to be meditating and I was waking up this morning and I tuned in and I'm like you gotta you gotta tell me what am I supposed to I knew I was going to be doing this day. I'm like, tell me what to share with the peoples. And uh, <laughs> the message was for me too. Uh, and the first thing they said was, it's not your fault. Again, that doesn't mean like, don't, don't, you don't have to worry about being responsible with your money. Again, for some people in their soul's contract, that's another lesson that you personally need to learn. But there was all this messaging that I'm passing along here. And they're reminding me of as we're recording this. But then there was this, uh, other thing I want to share with you and that was look at the energy that surrounds you look at the energy that surrounds you what do you listen to are you somebody who listens to the clock app which can be valuable it can be a very valuable tool but people also it's a game you have to overstate everything dang 
I wish I was so charismatic. I'm going to be like, guess what's going to happen today? You know, I'm the angel's having a message for you. <laughs> I'm going to try that just for funsies. Okay, let's <laughs> make sure. Make sure you go there if you want to see me making a fool out of myself. Yeah, what? Why not? If it's if it's a good laugh for you, it's worth it. Okay. But looking at uh, the energies that surround us, what what is the story? Recognizing the story and recognizing as well. How do I want to say this? I I want to I I want to kind of like hold back of steering us down a certain road of like, this is a hologram. I mean, maybe, what do I know? Uh, Maybe it could be, but definitely this is a type of, again, I want to be careful. I was going to say virtual reality where, you know, it feels so real, but we still have control over it. But again, you know, I think it's going to take our brains down a certain path that I'm not trying to take us down. Point is, don't let anything panic you. Don't let anything take away your sense of self. There's a Vroom Vroom car in the background. Why the heck not? Let's just put that in here. That's awesome. (laughs) Don't let anybody take your creative life force. Now, that's Archangel Gabriel territory. And one of the messages that was over on the clock app that I just, when I I feel them coming through, I'll just type it out. Because I don't put makeup on ever, except for when I'm doing this. And I ain't trying to get on the interwebs and be there permanently looking the way I do. Okay, but uh, <laughs> I put on there that Archangel Gabriel came through and was saying, you know, the sacral chakra is incredibly, <sighs> again, they have different words. They're saying malformed. I, I, and I know that that's the interpretation trying to come through. So let me say that it has taken a beating. Okay. The sacral chakra is your creative life force. It is conception. It is creating that next chapter of your life. It is manifestation. It's money flow as well. And that goes into the root chakra too. So they kind of work together on that. And if you can imagine, it goes up into the solar plexus, which is your self-esteem. It's how you put yourself out into the world. What do you believe about what you're capable of? The lower chakras have all taken quite a hit recently. And then of course... Archangel Raphael gets in here with the, you know, past few years, all the fear around health. That's being amped up again. That's what we're talking about. How am I supposed to be spiritual? <laughs> and that, I can make a whole other video on that. Um, or to keep ourselves in this expanded awareness, this expanded consciousness, while all this stuff is being thrown at us. And they're reminding you to see it for what it is. It's a ploy. It's a game. It's uh, a false overlay reality that is designed to make us forget ourselves and therefore fail ourselves. There's no need for it. So again, let's go back to the, the practical stuff. What do we do? You get up in the morning and I know most of you, maybe not, but if you're like me, you hit that snooze button a few times. Yeah. When you're in that state perfect time to do some deep breathing if you even want to put on a meditation or just start meditating in silence invite your angels and archangels to come forward they're not your archangels everybody's archangels but you know what i mean ask for that angelic energy to come through you and what they will do and they're saying right now to offer this to you because a lot of humans do this they start off by trying to clear away any entanglements, any energetic blocks. And they're saying that most of us block that. I'm probably guilty of that too. Why the heck would we do that? Because how many of you, when you start to feel like, okay, I I just want to get to the solution. And then the angels are coming back and saying, but we got to clear this thing away. It's almost like our egos are going to see it as like, you're making me focus on the problem. And some practitioners might say, don't focus on the problem. Just skip to the solution. Fake it till you make it. Whatever. But remember, you got a soul contract you're trying to work through. Okay? So there's no skipping ahead. You're just going to repeat that lesson if you don't learn it. So you got to just take a minute there. And whatever is hurting, imagine yourself, like when you got sore muscles and you go get a massage, it hurts, but it's a release at the same time. So allowing the angels to help you clear that out, specifically Archangel Michael and the angels that he works with, Allowing all that to come on out and then allowing some healing to come in. Maybe that's Raphael for you and just seeing who shows up for you. 
okay? See who's going to show up for you, who's going to show you, here's, here's where you're being held up. We so want to get to the solution that we will not pay attention to what is causing the problem. So for you, let's say it's in the heart space. Maybe Raphael shows up for you and says, you're not opening your heart to the potentials. You're not opening your heart up to, you know, what you can really accomplish in this world. Or you're still dealing with heartache from a disappointment or a breakup, whatever. Okay, whatever type of thing might be coming up for you. Don't skip that. Don't skip that because when you ask the angels and the archangels to come forward and help you manifest, they have to get you ready for the manifestation. And this isn't a vision board, honey. Okay, it's not a vision board. Oh, I just fake it till I make it. Yeah, that works. It works. But you're coming from here, which is not a bad thing. But you need to be coming from here in your whole being in accordance to your soul's contract. Whatever chapter you're in, And have a more, let's say, more effective manifestation. Because a lot of people say, oh, look, see, I manifested this. Often it goes out as quickly as it came. Or, and I use this example too, there was a woman, she was bragging because she had, it was a law of attraction channel. And she was bragging that she had manifested a house. She had manifested a house. She got into a relationship and moved in with the guy. Was that the goal? Maybe. Uh, okay. But in my brain, when she said she was trying to manifest a house, I thought it was going to be in her name. Again, no hate. No, you know, but I, I was confused. <laughs> her manifestations are hers, but that's, she was bragging as if she had gotten this house and like her name's on the deed and it's not. Her sense of security in her home is completely contingent upon a relationship. And what I understood is that she didn't know this guy very long. Feel me? You see what I'm saying? So we can't just get into the magic of manifestation and play tricks with it. It's not a game. It's not a game. And they're even coming in here and saying, they're saying, go along with that. Because when people manifest from that standpoint or misuse the law of attraction, cheapen it, keeping it very intellectual, keeping it very cerebral, what ends up happening is that when it inevitably fails or fall up, falls apart or it's disappointing, or people put mind over matter so hard that they weren't ready for the outcome. Think of somebody who has nothing and then becomes a billionaire. I don't know if that's ever happened, but maybe. Um, they're not prepared for that. They're not ready. They didn't go through all the soul lessons to get there. So once that all falls apart, they're saying this is where people fall drastically. And they see themselves as failures. Maybe they start to lie and pretend like everything's fine. Maybe they are in such a low place that they're having a hard time building themselves back up. Or for manifestation, because not every manifestation is going to fail. But like, you know, if it does stay, people realize this isn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. And now they're getting trapped in a third dimensional ego consciousness swirl where they're looking at the material world, being too obsessed with the material world, and they're forgetting their spiritual self. Okay, that can happen for some people. The big conversation. But the bottom line here, how are we supposed to manifest when we're in survival mode? Realize you don't have to be in survival mode. Realize that, you know, what is being fed to you and don't go into the, I know that's a lie. Not all of it, every, this is the tricky part. Everything that's been being presented to us, it has some bit of truth to it. That's how they get us. That's how it attaches to us. That's how we get open to the lies. Because we're hanging on to the granule of truth. So be careful with that. See things as they are. Going down the road of, I know everything and I know what's going on. I, I've seen so many people do that and they are conspiracy theorists. They are, there is a disgruntledness behind it. There's an anger behind it. And you can tell they're getting a charge out of the argument. Almost. Or getting a charge out of, I know something you don't know. <laughs> All of that. We don't need it. We don't need it. We got no room for it. Okay. Balancing. Balancing. So the next time that bill comes in and you don't have any money and you don't know where that money is coming from, take a moment, breathe in. Breath will help you immediately. And it will have a physiological effect on you as well, where it actually calms the whole nervous system. Remind yourself, this is just a bill. 
this is just temporary. Remind yourself of how many times you've come through things like this and been better for it. How scared you were the first time you went to high school and maybe had to memorize your your locker combination. It could be as simple as that. Remember when something really stressed you out and then you got through it and you realized it wasn't a big deal and there was no need to be fearful. If you're having a hard time finding a job and you know there's a narrative out there which there's a granule of truth in this that it's hard to get a job right now again there's a granule of truth but that doesn't have to be the case for you all the time you just need one job mostly (laughs) for most people you just need one job right so that's what we're saying here taking a moment and realizing this is temporary this is just trying to get me to forget myself this is trying to get me into that low space of panic worry stress And then I fizzle out, fry my nervous system, and now I can't even think straight. I can't even do the things that I need to do to take care of myself. So we realize that right then and there. If you want to do a meditation, if you can, take a couple minutes to do that. Remember the clearing I said. And then from there, once you do all the clearing, then you can start the manifestation process. Right, I know that's a big thing. We threw a lot at you. What is this? A half hour, er, not reading, half hour video. Yikes, I'm so sorry I went out for so long. It's a big topic. Leave your questions down below. If there's something that this video sparked a question in your mind and it's a big topic, I can make a whole other video on it. All right, but I've kept you for a half hour. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. And we'll leave it there. I am sending you so much love. Please receive it. I am sending you so much love and take care.